Hi, this is Mark Ganser, Technical Account Manager with EAC Product Development Solutions with this week's Tip of the Week. Have you ever had an issue where you've got a, uh, a model, some sort of a model you're showing on a drawing, where the, the size of that model can vary greatly? Maybe it's some sort of product you configure, and uh, depending on the job you're doing for the customer, the size of it can vary drastically. I've got a drawing here with a 12-inch long, 6-inch diameter piece of pipe. Let's change it to something... Uh, little bigger. Let's say this time it's going to be 6 feet or 72 inches. Now the drawing looks great now, but as soon as I regenerate this, not a great looking drawing. Now if I had a, a big drawing package where I was uh, altering a bunch of different piece part components for a customer job and I had to look at them all to make sure the scale was still making the drawing look good, that's a nasty piece of work. So we're going to use something called the drawing scale factor and show you how to automatically size these views. We'll change this back to its size. Let's do that in the model. So let's open up the model for this drawing, this driving it. There we go. We'll go into the relations. And let's say I wanted uh, this model, no matter how long it gets, I wanted it to take up, say, a 12-inch footprint on the drawing paper itself lengthwise. So I'm going to set up a parameter, and this is a canned one recognized by PTC. It's called drawing underbar scale underbar factor. I'm an engineer, so I can't spell, so I'm going slowly. Now I want the scale to be such that I'm taking up a 12-inch footprint on my drawing format, and I'm going to dry the scale so the longer this piece gets, the smaller my scale gets. So I'm going to divide that 12 inches by 2. So right now I'm 12 divided by 12, 1 to 1 scale. If I make it 24 inches long, it should be half scale, and so on. Say OK. Now, just for demo hygiene and sample hygiene, we'll regenerate, but we shouldn't have to. Nothing really changed. Now let's go to the drawing. Now how do I make the drawing understand that scale? Well, we just type in the, double click on the scale and type in drawing underbar scale, underbar factor, and we'll take a look at my typing to make sure we did that. Say OK. And there you go. So even though this might not have been the greatest choice for what we have going on here, let's make that a smaller diameter so it's a better example. You can see how the scale of the drawing jumped up like crazy. Now, if I double the scale of this, or double the size of it, I should half the scale. So let's say then make this 24 inches long. And the instant I regenerate this, notice that scale factor is keeping track. Not only is it updating here, obviously, but if you have that called out on the format, it's updating there as well. Well, I know what you're gonna what you're thinking right now. What if we had a real odd dimension, like it was 26.578 or something weird like that? Let's regenerate that. And you go, well, you know, that's, that's really great that it changes the scale, but 113 divided by 250 for a scale is not something drawing standards really allow you to do. So let's switch to another example we have. I've got a tube part here, and we haven't really shown what the end view of that looks like, so let's pop the view on the end so you can see what that's like. I'm going to throw an odd dimension onto this guy. He's driven by a drawing scale factor, let's say 32.875, and let's regenerate this as well. I noticed, wait a minute, it, it rounded, it knew what to do, it went to a quarter, even though that the math for holding up this footprint doesn't work for that quarter. Well, here's what you can do to take advantage of the fact that you want to scale that to fit the drawing well, but you want to use the standard acceptable drafting standard scales of one-tenth, one-quarter, one-half, one or two-x, four-x, ten-x, really whatever you need them to be. Let's open up this model and show you how that was done. Now if we go to the relations on this model, let's expand this so you get a better look at it. 
I've got a scale test where I've got that same 12 inch footprint I want on my drawing divided by the overall length of this model. But I created a, a parameter called scale test. What I do then is run through a series of if statements. If the scale test is greater than 10, round to 10. If it's between 4 and 10, round it down to 4. If it's between 2 and 4, round to 2 and so on. And don't worry about uh, jotting down these. I will actually post these relations as an example in the comments under this video. Now one last thing I wanted to show you guys as well. Let's close this out. Close that. Let's go back to our original drawing that we had with this pipe model. So let's open up that pipe by itself. Now this is the one where we already created that relationship for the drawing scale factor. And I mentioned earlier that something that's coded right into the software recognizes what that is. So if I create a new drawing with this in place already, this relationship, it should know to fill that out already. So let's create a brand new drawing. And we'll grab one of our formats. And when we create a view, you can see already, even before we pick the orientation and such, that it already knew to use drawing scale factor for the drawing scale. That was automatic. So when that is present in a model, whenever you create a drawing driven by that model, it automatically takes care of that for you. Now if you have a question on this tip or any other tip of the week, go ahead and shoot us an email at EACPDS or, better yet, leave a comment in the comment section below the video and we'll get back to you. Have a great rest of your day.